Hello friends, happy lunchtime to all of those of you who are joining us on your lunch break. Uh, my name is Jerry. I lead Awaken Voices. I'm on staff here at Awakenings here in the Ravenswood neighborhood of Chicago. And this is our second of three mini launches that we are doing uh, to celebrate the release of Awaken Voices issue 14, Curtain Call or um, see you later. I see our first writer has joined. Hi, Donnie. Um, let me see if I can bring Donnie in. We will also have another writer who's joining us today. So we'll give folks just a minute to join. Let me see if I can bring in Donnie. And in the meantime, for all of you folks who maybe haven't checked out the issue yet, uh, please head over to awakeningsart.org and from there you can find Awaken Voices, you can find all of our back issues, and you can um, certainly find Donnie's piece in there. Let's see. Sometimes technology does not want to work with me. Here we go. And let's Hello. Hi, Donnie. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I am doing quite well. Thank you. I'm not used to doing Instagram Live, so it's new for me. <laughs> Welcome to the space. I love your background. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Got to keep my office cozy, you know. <laughs> yep. Great, got great fall energy right now. Yeah, Instagram Live is something we've been doing on and off a little bit, and it's always nice to have it just like slip right into everyone's feed afterwards. So um, right. whether it's here on Instagram or elsewhere on YouTube, it'll be exciting for folks who maybe couldn't quite get their lunch break to time with us today. Um, hopefully in a moment, we'll have another writer join. Um, so there'll be two of you writers and artists Mm -hmm. um, that I would love to chat with today. But first, I just wanted to say happy publication day. It's out. The issue's out there in the world. Happy publication day. I'm so excited. I've had such a wonderful time um, working with Awakened Voices, not only for this issue, but for the prior one that I was published in. So it's great. I'm so glad. Um, tell me a little bit about your piece uh, as far as like, did you have a plan when you first started writing your piece? Is it, did it fall kind of in line with other pieces you've written and how you traditionally like to write? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, my piece is titled The Unselvaged Body, Biotic and Broken. And um, it was originally connected with my uh, second poem collection, Feats of Alchemy. Uh, and I, I guess the question, the answer is, it was spontaneous, but it was also planned at the same time. <laughs> it, I guess that's kind of a conundrum, but I will explain. So when I put together a collection of poems, I always try to identify themes that I see, you know, bubbling to the surface. And for this specific collection, I had a very distinct theme of uh, kind of the, that those places that we go to when we are coming back from trauma, like a lot, I know I've had a lot of people who have experienced trauma, myself included, explain that sometimes they just feel like a cyborg. Sometimes they feel like a robot, kind of. Um, part of, I guess that would be part of the healing process from experiencing something. And I would argue that's where... Um, this poem came from, uh, I have wanted for a long time to write about uh, the LGBTQ plus experience and how there is a lot of sexual violence that takes place in the LGBTQ plus community. And um, this poem is essentially my story illustrating how I've had to work toward coming back from that. Um, and healing from it. So, and, and there have been so many instances where I literally have felt like a robot. I have had a difficult time making connections, um, especially, you know, intimate connections with people as a result. So 
<laughs> Hopefully that answered that question. It does. It certainly does. And that's something that I both think um, I hear people communicate in different words or talking about that feeling here in the gallery space at Awakenings and also online, um, as well as in, you know, my relationships outside of Awakenings. So reading your piece as both a reader and an editor, I was like this, these are the words, these are the words, this is the piece of so many um, feelings and phases that you don't like go through at once sometimes, <laughs> even if yeah. you wish it was just once, um, that it, it was so, and not just an aha moment reading it, but it was a, oh, I think I understand what someone has tried to tell me in the past and also what I have tried to tell someone and been unable to. And I think that can be so difficult in language. And I was so immediately moved and happy to see your way of describing it and your way of putting it on the page. So um, my first encounter with this piece in particular was just, it definitely sparked a recall and memory. So it's very interesting to hear you talk about the beginning of this piece as, as a conundrum, because both in reading it, it feels like a conundrum of like going forward, but also being able to look back with a new, um, with a new healing perspective and a warmer perspective. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for sharing your piece with all of us. It makes yeah, both like backwards and forwards. It's interesting to hear this conundrum. That's almost a little bit what it felt like in <laughs> right. the best of ways as a reader to, to see this work. Um, right. Thank you for saying that, by the way. That really means a lot. Like, obviously, there originally there was a certain level of discomfort in writing about that topic because, um, like, I feel like as gay men, we don't always, and, and I'm sure this could be the case for other people in the LGBTQ plus community as well, but I feel like we don't often talk about that violence that takes place. So there's like a, a degree of shame surrounding it, right? Um, especially considering, um, especially when we are earlier on in our coming out process, learning to become who we are, like, intimacy almost becomes like this transactional experience, right? So talking about it runs the risk of, you know, compromising our worth with regard to that transactional intimacy. I don't know if that makes sense, but so like now that I'm looking back on it and that was like 15 years ago, I can kind of separate myself from it and be like, okay, I'm ready to write about this now more directly than I have before. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that makes sense. I think, um, I think that's why I love these chats too, because there is so much that maybe I get from your piece on my own, but I know while I can find maybe some commonalities in our experiences, we, we are different people. We live different lives and it is so important. I think for, um, maybe folks who are listening and don't identify themselves as survivors or, know that their experience with sexual violence is very different. I think um, I am always so appreciative to learn more about folks whose experiences are very different than mine and know that um, I think it is important to continue to name it and to, um, to listen as well, as much as it might be healing for me to see my own experience, to also listen to others in which I have differences. Um, I, I guess I want to continue and ask you a little bit more about, so you said there's 15, 15 years or some separation, but this piece is published recently mm -hmm. again. Um, so what are you hoping either today or what have you hoped with maybe this piece, with your books for readers to, what do you hope they'll experience in your work? And I do know some writers really don't like this question. Um, so as I love this question. Who, okay, great. <laughs> Then here, I have this delightful question. Well, what do you want people to experience? Right. I, I guess as I've grown as a writer, I've become a lot more conscious of the connection between writer and audience, right? Because mm -hmm. I think that um, at a certain point, we are trying to find catharsis for ourselves. But at the same time, I think we want to build some sort of connection with our audience and help them experience a similar catharsis based on their sets of experiences and their history, right? So for this poem, 
specifically, and then I will branch out to the rest of my work, but for this poem specifically, I have, you know, obviously the LGBTQ plus community is, I would argue, the biggest audience that I want to connect with. Uh, I want to normalize, to help normalize the conversation about um, this sort of thing that happens in our community, kind of disempower that shame a little bit. That way we can, you know, together work toward uh, not only creating a better sense of awareness, but helping ourselves heal a little bit, because this happens far more often than I think a lot of people are willing to admit. Uh, I additionally, like the, the other interesting thing about this poem is that, and, and I'll perform it here in a, in a few minutes, so you have this context, but it is directed in voice to the lover to the the person who is in a relationship with the individual harboring that trauma, right? So I, I, I really want this poem to speak to those people, um, to encourage them that, you know, they're not doing anything wrong as they patiently walk with us through our own healing, right? And that, mm. you know, if, if for a, a situation, you know, a person might not be able to be intimate, like that it's not their fault, that um, their support and their presence in of itself is more powerful than that act of trauma that happened a long time ago. Um, with regard to the rest of my work, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very passionate about storytelling through poetry, and I think that as like different marginalized communities, uh, like communities in general, I just think that more storytelling is is always better because that's how people learn about different experiences, right? And that's what I really want to do through um, all, all of my work. The the book that the this poem was originally in, um, Feats of Alchemy, was about my experiences as a gay man. Um, adapting and navigating life post coming out experience, which I think is, you know, a window of time that is often under discussed. So, um, so it, I guess all in all, my goal is to make that connection, to normalize the conversation and, uh, you know, just create a better sense of awareness about a variety of different topics. Mm -hmm. Would you hold up your book again, maybe up yeah. like, even closer to the camera? Feats of Alchemy, where can folks find it? Uh, you can find uh, Feats of Alchemy on Amazon. If you type in Donnie Winter, you should be able to find it. Um, you can find it through an independent bookstore, like a pop-up bookstore called Leopard Print Books. Uh, and if, or if you ever want a copy, you can just email me directly and I can send you one as well. So there's always options. <laughs> Love it. Love having the options. Um, well, we'll still, hopefully our other writer who's supposed to join can hop in. I know um, technology happens to all of us, even when we, you know, try to do what we can to uh, make technology happy. Sometimes it's not. So um, we'll see. But thank you in the meantime for being, for being here with us. Um, I would love to, I guess it's, you're brilliant. You've already answered so many of the questions that I was like, here's what I'd like us to touch on. So <laughs> I am a chatterbox, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I just want to sit here and listen. And um, that's what a delightful experience for me, too. So um, I I would love for us to hear your piece. Would you, would you sure. perform your piece for us? I would be honored to perform it. Um, all right, here we go. The Unsalvaged Body, Biotic and Broken. Tonight, Lover. You're a cyberneticist. These cogs have grown brittle from disuse and the chemicals in these vessels are no substitute for the blood that once flowed. Tonight, lover, you're a curator. This body is a museum with rusted gears forged long ago with soldered computer chips bereft of lithium ion heft. Tonight, lover, you're my alchemist. I'm a steampunk automaton splayed across this bed, and I regret that you were charged with my maintenance, but I know you'll salvage me. 
I know you'll raise me from the dead. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for I like I it's quickly grown to become one of my piece favorite pieces that that I was scared of at first that I now respect more than I used to because again that vulnerability made me kind of have an iffy relationship with that poem but now it's I, I look on it look at it and I'm like you know I have found that catharsis that I needed so yeah I'm glad to hear that I find that encouraging about maybe my own pieces that are sitting in a, in a drawer somewhere or in a back hard drive of the computer. Um, I, I wonder what you would, maybe not advice, but I wonder if you have an affirmation for other survivors who are writing that maybe haven't gone through the whole process of writing of, um, publishing your work is out in the world and has been many times over you do choose to interact with your audience and with your mm -hmm. readers and that's very exciting for someone as a reader it's very exciting to get to see that in a different role as an editor has published you know a couple pieces of your work um and often kind of i hear both here at awakenings and elsewhere people who maybe haven't gone through the process of either finishing write that poem that is challenging for them or folks who uh, don't know what to expect when they publish. And sometimes I find that I don't necessarily have um, advice for people so much as um, an affirmation for folks. Right. Well, I, I suppose that the biggest affirmation that I can curate here would be just sharing my personal experience with publishing and how, what it's done for me. Um, because publishing is, obviously you can write something, but publishing it elevates it to a whole nother level because you are putting yourself out there in a way that you, you may or may not be ready for, right? So for me, I, I guess publish, publishing my work came easily for me because I spent much of my teenage years and my early 20s just continually feeling minimized and erased. And um, of course, the trauma that I went through like 15 years ago, that added to it, that, that, you know, agitated it considerably. So for me, putting my work out there and, and having a publisher, you know, give my work a home, uh, it, it was an act of resistance, I would say. Like, I, I felt that it was an act of resistance because despite how much people tried to minimize or erase me, these poems are, in a way, like pieces of myself that I'm putting out into this world. And no matter how I might feel minimized or how I might just want to, you know, hide like I always used to, those poems will always be out there now, no matter what. And my hiding won't change that. So they are, I would say, a legacy of sorts, but they are also um, like symbols of survival. Yeah, I love that. I do find that, you know, any, any of the pieces in Awakened Voices and um, other survivor writing feel like um, beacons of strength. And I, as a reader, maybe don't know if that survivor is feeling strong that day, but mm -hmm. that strength still endures. And I still feel like I've received some of that strength. Right. Yeah. Right. And see, I, I guess adding it to that, because that was a very good point that you just made. I, I feel like strength comes in so many different forms. Like we might not feel strong ourselves, but we still may take an action that is perceived of as strong by other people. And I think that for me, like, of course, at first when I got my works published, like I did not feel strong. I felt vulnerable. I felt scared. Um, but in making that decision, I think I was able to fortify my strength later. Like now, I feel stronger than I ever have been. And I 
I understood that I had to go through that vulnerability as a stepping stone to get to now. And, and I, I think that those small decisions that we make, no matter how unbelievably small they are, I think that they can really uh, fortify us later on and help us find that healing that we are searching for. Well said. I am going to take that idea of those little stepping stones that feels, um, yeah, that is a really good reminder to me personally, and I hope to everyone else, that mm -hmm. those can be the little steps that continue. Yeah. Donnie, yeah. this has been really lovely. Um, our other writer has messaged me in the background that they're having technical difficulties. So um, thank you. You have completely carried this today, and um, it's been so delightful to hear your your story and to hear your um, poem performed live for us and i'm excited for folks in the future hello to the future um who are getting to also hear your piece and again um would you hold up your book one more time i just want people to read all of your work here i have Do another one again? shameless shameless self-promotion <laughs> Oh, I asked you. My yeah, first collection, Carbon Footprint, and my second, Feats of Alchemy. So Beautiful. And I want to thank you for allowing us this outlet, for, you know, giving us a platform to have our voices be heard. That's so important. And especially for survivors, I think that sometimes we need, oftentimes we need spaces like these. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. On behalf of everyone at Awakening Staff Board, all of our volunteers um, and our incredible literary team, it's truly an honor and a privilege. And um, that's everything for this mini launch. All of the folks listening, watching, in whatever time frame you are, please go read Donnie's work, both in print and online at awakeningsart.org. Um, those archives will be up even years from now, so please take a look. And um, Donnie, is there any handles or anything you'd like folks to make sure they know where to find you if they want to read more of your work? Yes, uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Donnie Winter. You can find me on YouTube. My poetry YouTube channel is called Donnie Speaks, one word. So feel free to go check those out. And thank you for the support. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Donnie. Have a good rest of your day. And again, congratulations. Happy Publication Day. It's um, truly beautiful to be in this space with you. So thank you. Likewise. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye.